Hello, creatives, and welcome back to another episode of Deconstructing the Narrative. I am your host, Erica Seha, and we are back here today with Randy. How are you, Randy? I'm doing well, and you? Good, good. Um, so basically, I don't, I don't know if you've seen any episodes of Deconstructing the Narrative, but essentially what we're doing- Of course interviewing um, artists to kind of get a you know a gauge of what you guys are doing as creatives um, in the creative community and also you know in hopes of connecting you guys with each other and also everybody else in the outside world um, so uh, to get started today can you just give us a little bit of a background of what you do all right so my name is randy richard randy morales um, i am a designer and a painter so um, i typically i work for Al yoga as a design assistant and I run a, a couple a couple other brands as well. And then I paint pretty much every day I can. Awesome, awesome. And um, what do, would you say is like your theme behind your paintings? Do you have a specific theme that you focus on or um, is there um, a lot of different things that you're focusing on within your work? It's a mixture. I like to think of myself as, you know, those ink blobs from um, <laughs> the, psych the psychiatrist, like those, like uh -huh. that's how I like to look at my art where it's like very like, it's very subjective. You just kind of like find your own view of what you see in it oh i love that and for you is it is there a specific meaning behind it or are you just kind of yeah like, uh, most of know? my pieces have something to do with like what's going on with me like i have okay. one of this painting called boxed emotions mm -hmm. where on the outside it's very just calm it's like it's just two colors orange and blue and then in the center it is um it's just mumbo jumbo and like the box is just like a whole bunch of just like squiggly marks and lines which mm -hmm. kind of shows how we all box our emotions and it's just everywhere oh, awesome. inside awesome and um has there been any like real life occurrences like maybe something within your childhood or something you know as of recently that's kind of inspired you um and, and you know within a piece maybe a specific piece or a specific like theme within a couple pieces um yeah honestly so my art and with fashion too for me um you know, growing up as a kid, you know, you know, they say artists don't make money. Um, also for fashion, they said, you know, to be into fashion, you have to be a gay guy. Um, those mm -hmm. things were blocks for me as a kid, because, you know, as a straight male and a black straight male living in Washington state, like it was a lot of things to overcome. And I don't want to be labeled as, you know, a gay guy doing fashion. So that's why I never did fashion. I actually started doing mm -hmm. fashion when I was 29. So like two years ago. Um, awesome. And then, yeah, so it, it was those things that kind of held me back that once I started, once COVID hit, I started painting again. And it was just like, yo, why did I listen to these people? Like I put all these blocks in my mind. And then that's when I started doing my pieces. And it was just, it was kind of elementary in a sense, you know, it was just kind of like chaotic and out there, but like, mm -hmm. that's how I felt all my life. It was like, I've always been told I can't do this or that. And it was like, this is the time where I'm like, screw it. I'm just going to go for it and just go. Just go crazy. in and who cares what anyone says. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And um, speaking, you said you do some fashion too. So do you kind of incorporate yeah. like your paintings or your, uh, you know, your artworks into like uh, clothing or is it a completely separate thing? Yeah. Like what you're doing with painting? No, no. So um, right now I'm working on a brand with my homeboy um, called William Lewis, where um, we're making pieces. And what we're going to do is start taking some of these art pieces and start printing it on the shirts. Um, awesome. Just stuff that kind of makes sense for the brand. Um, mm -hmm. But that's the whole purpose is like art and fashion go hand to hand. Like totally, one hundred. Fashion mm -hmm. is yeah, it's it's fashion is art. Like it's art is your fashion. fashion is art, like you said. Yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. A lot of people, like, and, like view fashion as like its own entity, but realistically, no. like these designers, like in order to come up with things that are gonna like wow people and like want them to you know put them on as opposed to what they're already wearing, I feel like it's such a it is such a it's so many design elements that come together and people don't realize exactly. that. Like, it's just clothing, you know, but it's really not. No. It's like you're wearing a lot, a lot of art every single day on your body. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like um, you'll go buy a shirt from like Vans or Zoomies or whatever that exactly. has print on it, and who did that? You know what I mean? like that's clearly like somebody else's work of art it's so art. i completely agree that's awesome um and for that and if you ever seen a runway show so yeah, yeah exactly yeah runway shows too like they i don't know if you've seen like a lot of like new york fashion stuff fashion week stuff but yeah. um i went to parsons personally and uh, we had to learn a lot oh, about nice. um what's it called about how um all the work that goes behind like putting a show together it's so crazy it's such yeah. a theatrical thing at this point whereas like you know obviously when fashion week was first a thing it was very much centered yeah. around just you know getting like the models out there with the clothing on and now it's so much of like a it's like a show <laughs> like you literally are yeah fancy so, savage yeah, really for example awesome. yeah uh-huh yes yeah, so that was crazy. a whole and, production like, even like old like Alexander McQueen stuff. I don't know if you've ever seen like any of his like yes. runway shows. Those are insane. <laughs> like, and it's just like mm. every designer trying to outdo the other next. And it's 
they're really cool. They're really like crazy. It's like, it's literally like going to a show or like a movie almost. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah, awesome. um, and for your fashion line, are you guys focusing on like one type? Are you guys doing like t-shirts? Are you guys going to be doing a lot of like um, a little mix of everything? Everything. So we have designer bags that we make. Um, we're doing jackets, coats, bottoms, tops, um, just a mixture of things like doing awesome. some uh, faux suede and stuff like that. And um, everything's produced here in LA. So we're buying all our stuff here and then actually producing everything here at Los Angeles. Oh, super cool. And are you guys, has it launched yet or are we still in the process of like getting it? Not yet. We're like right there. Like we're right currently there. just finishing <laughs> a couple more pieces. Uh, we're doing a nine collection drop. We're just trying to finish a couple of things. It's kind of hard during COVID to kind yeah. of get that stuff going. But um, yeah. there are factories open. And honestly, I feel like even though it's COVID time, right now is the time to really work on yourself. And once yeah. it's over, emerge, like Completely. grown and somebody yeah. new. Like a different person, yes. Exactly. <laughs> um, and speaking of COVID, um, something I have been talking about with everyone who I've been chatting with so far is um, kind of how they're dealing with this whole COVID thing. Because, you know, as an artist, it's really difficult to kind of not have that face-to-face -face interaction with, you know, the people you're working with. So um, I guess for you, what is something that you found um, that has really helped you kind of get through this time as an artist? Um, connecting with my paintings, you know what I mean? That's kind of like the main thing. It's just like using those feelings that I feel currently right now during COVID and putting it on canvas. Like, mm -hmm. even if it doesn't make sense right then, right there, at least I put it down. And then maybe later on it hits me like, oh, this is my feeling about what's happening currently with the current situation. Mm -hmm. Um, I just noticed that like, um, like, even though it is difficult, as long as you're putting something out there, there's going to be a viewers and people that probably feel the same way you do. Totally. And especially because I just feel like, you know, this is something I've been saying to everybody, but I really feel like it's so crazy how, um, since this has happened, um, you know, we've just kind of realized how important like all of the like technology and stuff that we have around us is like, um, mm -hmm. the fact that I'm able to hop on zoom right now with you and do this interview is awesome. Right. You know I mean? uh, <laughs> because, you know, like to like anyone else, you would think that an interview wouldn't be possible right now. So the fact that we have all the technology to kind of make these things happen is really exciting. And, um, my last guest, um, Minolta, she was explaining that, you know, for her, um, she really felt like COVID was something that kind of you know, obviously affected her, you know, in a different way. And she did mention that, you know, she feels like for anyone, you know, there's a lot of pressure to kind of just create, but I'm um, at the end of the mm -hmm. day, like we're all lucky to just be here and to be able to wake yep. up and be able to create, you know, and um, I thought that was a really big thing that she said. And I think that's a really special thing to share with everybody is the fact that, you know, um, we are so lucky to just be able to get up and do what we do and have the extra time exactly. to do what we want to do, you know, and um, I'm sure you've, you know, kind of taken that extra time and ran with it. So I think that's amazing. Yeah. That, you know, it, you know, it's turned something that's really obviously negative and not a good thing and to, you know somewhat of a good thing is awesome and the fact that you're taking you know what's going on and sharing your feelings through your work I think is really important too because I feel like it's really just going to allow people to you know connect with it because everybody can relate in this time like we're all in this together and everything that's going on is happening to everybody you know so to see a piece it of is. artwork and say hey like this is what that person was feeling I probably was feeling something similar you know is really 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 crazy important I think um, and I think it's just really important that we kind of um you know put like a mark on this time with art and with you know our words and our voices because um you know in 10 years everyone's gonna be like you're gonna have kids asking you like what happened during what COVID? was covid <laughs> yeah, exactly you know <laughs> so it's gonna be awesome that they can kind of like look at your work and kind of see what you were feeling during that time and kind of you know, be able to feel that for themselves as well so that's amazing um, yeah i agree because honestly i feel like covid woke me up honestly like yeah, covid made me realize like i've been working these jobs for these people making these other people rich where I'm just like, you know, trying to make just enough money to live in LA. And it was just yeah. like, this is like, that was like my waking point. Like, yo, I need to start doing something that makes me happy. It makes me yes. feel like I'm doing something successful instead of doing something to make somebody else become, you know, wealthier or anything like that. Totally. I totally feel that. I completely agree with that. <laughs> I'm right that with you. Awesome. Right. And then um, what is like a big or who, who or what, I guess, is a big source of inspiration for you, um, either or, and um, how have you, um, use that inspiration that you've taken from this person or thing and and incorporate that into your work? I feel, um, well, honestly, it's not like a specific artist. I would say my business partner within mm -hmm. this right now, he kind of inspired me. Like me and him went to fit him together. We're both military oh, awesome. vets. Uh, yeah, we're both military vets. And um, we just went to school and we were always like working on our own projects. Mm -hmm. But then we just realized that, you know, collaborating together was something that we should do. And that's what kind of mm -hmm. got everything started. Like, um, I talked about getting an art studio. 
Um, and he's like, he wanted one too, so we can do fashion design. And so we got that studio. And since we got that studio, we already grew into a bigger studio. And awesome. it's starting like a small community of people that want to just create and go, which that's kind of like the whole purpose of creative vice. My name mm -hmm. is because um, creativity is my vice. And I want to share that vice with others and get people out there and continue to create no matter what. Um, and don't right. let people judge you for your work and yeah. just accept you for you because art's subjective. And it's like, honestly, one of the hardest things because you're putting this out there for the world to see. And then people are sitting there looking at it and judging you for your work. I mean, that's nobody yeah. likes that feeling of like people are like, oh, what are you doing? But it's yeah. kind of like, as an artist, you just got to let it go and just say you don't care. Yeah, 100%. And especially um, because I feel like, you know, uh, this is kind of also something I was talking with my last guest too. So it's really exciting that you brought that up as well. I think it's really important that um, artists are sharing these kinds of tips because I really feel like, you know, in that, like kind of going with what you're saying that, um, mm -hmm. you know, people are judging you for your work, but at the end of the day, like we need to kind of stay focused on like why we started. And like, I feel like mm -hmm. it's really easy to fall into, you know, the trap of like wanting to like, you know, make something of yourself. And of course that is something that we all want, but at the end of the day, exactly. like, why did you start your art and what is it that you're trying to portray through your art? And like, just because somebody doesn't understand that message doesn't mean that there's not going to be another person who will understand that message and who will completely connect and agree with whatever it is that you're trying to put out there. So I think that's really important. You just got to find that audience. Exactly. Yeah. Find your audience and then just run with it. And at the end of the day, like, you mm -hmm. know, who cares what anybody says, <laughs> like you're doing this for you and this is exactly like your, and your creativity. So yeah, totally. Um, and I, you mentioned you um, are a military vet. So I kind of wanted to talk mm -hmm. to you about that and how maybe that those experiences that you've had within the military maybe impacted your oh. art in any way. For sure, the military. Honestly, the military. It was it was a good thing. Um, I enjoyed it because I actually got to travel the world. Um, like I've been to Spain, England, Scotland, Benidorm, uh, Spain, um, Malaga, Italy, uh, Dubai, and just seeing all those different places. I mean, seeing those different cultures um, inspires you just because you can see like their art style, the way they live, and that's oh, what something I like to include in my art is just like the idea of seeing other people's art and somehow include it into yours, like mm -hmm. seeing a different cultures, vibes. I think as long as you do it tastefully and not just like totally swagger Jack, but you know, yeah. take some of their stuff and then use it in yours and just like celebrate their culture in a sense. Totally. And is important. there like a specific um, like place that you've been, like do you have like a few specific places that just like really inspired you or the people that you met just really inspired Yo. you? Like what was your favorite Estonia. place you've been to? Oh, awesome. And why? Estonia. <laughs> um, so I met some friends here in LA that were couch surfing and they ended up couch surfing at my place. They're from Estonia. So I oh, went to go wow. visit them in Estonia and their culture is just so, it's so unique. It's like, it's kind of hard to explain. It's like living in like a whole new different time zone. Cause like there, it doesn't get dark at night. Cause it's like oh, one of those crazy. little <laughs> Northern places, but yeah, um, it's like a different vibe. Oh, totally. <laughs> it is. Um, but their, their designs are so um, rooted. Like it goes back and like, like their culture is so rooted. So like you can see some of their earlier people's designs and like it, the way it's just made in the clothes, you see it that. And that's kind of cool being from like, you know, America, I feel like I don't know anything about history much. Like anyway, our history is all mumbo jumbo. You don't really get to yeah. see that and kind of the culture that we live. So to see someone else's culture that really inspired me. And so I kind of try to embody some of that in my work too. Um, they like, they have the like castles and stuff like that. So it's something I look at as inspiration. Yeah, it's totally different from anything that you see over here. So I'm sure that's kind of impacted you in a different way as well. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and then um, what is like a dream project that you would like to work on? Like, it doesn't have to necessarily be with someone specific, but just something mm -hmm. that like you would like love to like just achieve within your career. So I have that planned out actually. Oh, <laughs> um, awesome. What I want to do <laughs> is I want to do an art installation someplace to um, bring focus to global warming. Um, oh, okay. I'm thinking of like making this huge, huge pyramid thing that has these lights on it. And the lights are focused on the center of the pyramid. It's a hollow pyramid. And in the center is a ball. And this ball oh, is awesome. like sludge on it. It's like mm -hmm. to symbolize like the globe. And then it's like yeah. sludge coming off it and like bringing attention to global warming and us not taking care of our planet. And that's yeah. just a, this big, huge piece I want to do that I will do eventually. Uh, awesome. Yes. Get <laughs> Put it into existence. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. That's amazing. And um, it, which, is that something you would want to work on by yourself or do you have a specific person that you would like to work on that with? Honestly, anybody wants to work with me on it, I'm down. <laughs> I mean, I just, I think it's important that, you know, people realize that, you know, this is our only planet that we live on. Currently, we don't have the capability of 
going to another planet and leaving this. So you got to take care of your home. Like you don't yeah, leave a totally. whole bunch of trash in your house currently now. So yeah. that's why I think it's important to bring that light and awareness. Yeah. I feel our- like we're feeling the impact of it now. It's been so crazy hot these past few weeks. Yes. It's, ridiculous. <laughs> it's like, what is going Literally. on? Like, <laughs> I don't think I've ever been like this crazy hot, like outside. <laughs> so I think everybody can agree that this is not like a myth anymore. <laughs> like this is a thing that's mm-hmm. happening. And yeah. And I think it's really, that's a really good message and a really important message. So that'd be amazing. <laughs> and we'll put it Literally. in. Literally. And the fact that I can go outside and I just see smoke in the distance. Cause you know, LA's on fire. Yeah. Like that's mm-hmm. crazy to me. Like how come we're not, I don't know. We got to fix that because, you know, that's not sustainable. Yeah, 100 percent. Awesome. And then um, what is something, you know, post COVID? I don't know when that's ever going to be, if we're ever going to be the same ever again. But um, what is Mm -hmm. something that as soon as the world is somewhat normal that you feel like you want to do as an artist, like something that's just like really like been on your mind that you're just like waiting for this all to kind of cool down so you can get done? Um. Go to an art gallery, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Something to like, it's something like going and looking at art in person and then getting your art put there and just like getting other people's opinions just because it's kind of cool to see what they might see in your art that you don't. Yeah. Um, I like a lot of my art pieces too. I don't sign the front of the art because I don't want it to be set in stone. Like that's the way you have to look at it. Right. Like I want it to be, you know, more of just like interpret the way you see it. Um, I did a, at first I started doing a lot of panel artwork. Mm-hmm. So I would paint like four different panels, put it paint four different panels. And then, you know, after it was done, I'd flip them and switch them around to see what you might see next. So mm-hmm. I really just want that interaction with people to see, like, I want them to see my art and just be like, yo, I see this. And right. that's something I miss right now. Cause like, it's just me, my, my um, partner and just a couple other people that see my art mm-hmm. currently. Mm-hmm. And I, I miss that actual vocal interaction about talking right. about right face-to-face interaction it's hard to like show over just like online and get that response yeah. that you want and be able to really connect with people yeah I definitely think that's something that I'm missing as well especially with uh, Sada you know we have been talking a lot about um, doing the events and stuff to kind of bring artists mm-hmm. in and to connect with each other and obviously with everybody else who would come into like an opening or something but um, it's really hard to do something like that right now just with everything that's it going is. on so like of course um, we're really grateful that we're able to kind of connect with everybody over zoom but we also are missing that, you know, really big gathering <laughs> style. Yeah. Of just being able to get people together and chat about about art and the creative industry because I feel like that's really important um, for us. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. I'm glad you guys got this again. going. This is amazing. Because yeah. I remember yeah, yeah, yeah. I signed up with you guys over a year ago. Um, I, I went to like one of your events way yeah. back when and it was just kind of cool. As soon as I saw I like, got the email, so I was like, oh, that's dope. I see them doing yeah. something. <laughs> Not letting COVID yeah. get them down. Yeah, I definitely think it's really important just to, um, you know, we, me and Andrea were really talking a lot about just, you know, getting, making sure that, you know, artists' uh, voices and stories are out there. I feel like, you know, we feel like at Sada that that's just the most important thing about an artist that distinguishes artists from one another because, you know, at the end of the day, like, you know, some work is similar, some work is different. Mm-hmm. There's all kinds of work out there, but the story behind the person is really what distinguishes the artist um, from anyone else. And I think that, you know, being able to contact artists and connect with them and get them to share their story, I think is so important because a lot of times on social media, you'll see a picture of like a piece of artwork that someone did, but like, why did they do that? Or like, what is the story behind that artist? And like, what is going on in their life? You know, that's so important. And it really plays into everything that an artist puts out. So um, I'm really glad that we were able to do this too and just be able to- Trust me, same here. Yeah. (laughs) You've given us artists a voice, which we need. Cause I mean, like I said, most of my pieces, there's something behind it that I feel, I just don't really get to explain that in a picture. Yeah, totally. Awesome. And um, lastly, or not last, but Mm -hmm. I have one more question after this, but um, (laughs) the last big question, I guess, um, is um, what is a piece of advice that you would give to an artist that is just up and coming or that is just starting um, Mm -hmm. based off of all the experience that you've had as an artist in the creative industry? Um, Keep your mind sane. Um, I know as an artist like me, honestly, like last Friday, I was going through like the dumps. Um, I like to say this a lot, but um, doubt is like the black plague for an Mm -hmm. artist like anytime Mm -hmm. you start doubting yourself getting that like oh I'm not good enough that's when you start you start not caring anymore you stop doing it um Mm -hmm. so you you gotta keep that you gotta keep that passion no matter what yeah you can have a bad day one day but the next day go back out create something new um because if you don't do that I mean once again art is very subjective and like people are looking at your art and judging you for that you just gotta learn to be comfortable with that and just know like, hey, they're going to judge it, but don't let it affect you. Keep doing you. 
And that, exactly. that's what makes you shine, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And especially because like, like, you know, like we talked about earlier, just like the fact of, you know, mm -hmm. the narrative behind it. And sometimes someone walking up and looking at a piece of yours might not understand exactly what's going on. So to them, it's just mm -hmm. you know, paint on a canvas or it's just a photograph or it's just, you know, a sculpture. But to you, there's a story behind it. And that's what makes it have meaning. You know what I mean? So I definitely yeah. think that's really good advice to just kind of you know, like brush it off and, you know, keep Yeah, going, literally you know. brush it off. So, so one day someone's going to look at that and understand exactly what you were trying to put into it. And that's going to be like a really great day, you know? So yeah, yeah. I mean, that's great advice. Awesome. And then and also then like, no life. matter what, oh, sorry. <laughs> Just say no, no matter no. what, paint on whatever you find. Like I actually started painting out on a broken TV. That was oh, the first really? oh, that's awesome. medium. Yeah. Cause it was just like a TV is made to have a picture, even though it's broken, yeah. doesn't mean it has to be broken forever. So I just paint it on TV. I paint on the floor of my art studio. I paint on the that's walls, amazing. just like, no matter what, it's like, I don't have a canvas that day. I'm just like, at least I'm getting yeah. something out. And it's like, a it's a practice. <laughs> Literally it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying go out, tag a whole bunch of like yeah, yeah, yeah. graffiti <laughs> on the wall. I'm not really saying that, but like, no matter what the world is, your canvas, like there's always something yeah. you can find to create some type of art. Awesome, I love that, that's amazing. Perfect, and then um, lastly, the question we've been asking everyone just for fun is what is your favorite song right now? <laughs> ooh, favorite song. Um, <laughs> so, ooh, that's a hard one. Brent Fias is for sure one of my favorite artists right now. I would say, uh, am I allowed to cuss? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> All right, <laughs> just asking, just cause this song, Fuck the World by Brent Fias is my song okay. right now. This is literally, fuck the world. Do your own thing yeah. and just like create. So oh Brent Fias, fuck the world is my number one song right now. Awesome, awesome. Well, perfect. Thank you so much. It's been so great talking to you and having you on the on this, on this episode of Deconstructing the Narrative. I'm sure anyone hearing is going to get a lot of great advice. I know speaking with you, I've heard good. a lot of great things that are going to help me with my craft as well. So I really appreciate you good, taking good. the time to come on here and speak with everybody. And um, I just wanted to see if there's any form of contact that you can share with anyone listening and um, where they can reach you should they need to. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, thank you once again for having me here. And if anybody ever needs advice or wants to get out there, let me know. You can reach me at, at Creative Vice. Um, awesome. That's my Instagram handle. Or you can reach me at my personal Instagram handle, which is at Randa Conda. Don't ask me about the name. Friends gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> but also, awesome. uh, yeah, reach me there. Um, I'm, I'd love to talk, help, um, collaborate. I'm here. Let's create art. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. And Thank for everybody you. else listening, if you guys ha are a creative or if you have any creative friends that you think would be great for me to interview, um, please send them over to me. Um, there is a link in the bio on our Instagram for the type form where they can go in and sub submit an application or you guys can send me an email directly at erica at um, Also, if you text a black heart to um, the number 310-388-9808. Um, you'll actually get text updates every single time a new episode goes live. So I would recommend everybody do that because we have new episodes going up every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. So thank you so much, Randy. And thank you everybody for of listening. Course. And I really look forward to the next episode. I'll talk to you guys and soon. And thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye.